previous videos, we have explored how to create behaviors, how to create variables. We have looked at feedback and event handlers, master behaviors, a lot of interesting things. We have also briefly touched on layers. In this video, we'll go much more into layers and actually configure device control. One thing we have not touched at all is how to change parameters in a device, how to operate an ATEM switcher or a PTC camera. And we'll get closer to that in this video while still learning a lot of concepts in Reactor. So first of all, I want to change project. Uh, projects are saved projects, files that includes your configuration, your panels, and also your devices in uh, like one file. And I'll just create a new one here for our further testing. And add this, and then I will save it, and I will also activate it. And that gives me a clean slate. I can always go back to previous projects, so that's a great way to make your Skyhawk controller flexible to different uh, productions that you have. So um, keep that in mind. Adding a panel, we've seen that before. Quickly, we'll just continue with our PTC Fly, which has been our control of choice for quite a while. A PTC Fly can be uh, purchased with Unisketch inside or with Blue Pill inside. And uh, in this case, if it was a Unisketch or Blue Pill controller, we have a actual Blue Pill server running the whole show. So actually everything we're doing, what you see in this web UI is inside this device. That's the one that runs it. PoE powered and all the goodies that you also know. We will add devices. I will uh, try my luck with device discovery, see if we have some devices on our network here. And uh, it turns out we have. There are actually two very nice PTC cameras right here. Those Canon cameras. Let's just uh, see if we can filter the list here. So we'll just add this one. One of the CIN500, we'll also have the CIN300 here. And um, <clears throat> this video is uh, aligning itself with some slides that uh, you see here. This is like um, configuration tab two. It's a, a training slides that you are so welcome to read. And we'll get back to what you see right here because this is a very useful slide to illustrate how layers, layers work. And um, there's also a uh, first document. So that there is this training material as the background of what we're doing. We will add a vMix device. So um, we can just search it up manually here by typing in vMix and we'll find it in this list. So I'll just pick it right here. Save and I will also and now, now you see that this device has no connection to anything. Yeah, we did not offer it an IP address and today we'll simulate it. So I'll just check that box so that it's a simulated device in our little collection. And then I'll search up for an ATEM switcher. So let's see if we can find ATEM switcher here. We have a, a number of these and this one is right here next to me. So I will also have that one and we will connect to it as you uh, will see. There we go. All right, so we have some devices. We have the PTC Fly. We are ready to go to the configuration tab and get started. Uh, that is actually not entirely true. Um, what we have, and that's great when we pick any of these devices, is that we uh, we get a default configuration chosen for us. And I mentioned it in a different video. That makes it so easy to just go straight ahead and add cameras. Actually, um, why not? Let's just try this. So I, I can just pick these cameras, which are already added as devices over here. And I have PTC control now. Do you want to see it? We can go to the simulator. So in the simulator, and let, let me just show you, because the, um, the cameras that we are controlling are these. They are on the network. They are far away in, in the office of Skahoy, in a different part of Copenhagen. I am at my home office. And tonight, I will control these two cameras over the network. I'm actually connected to them right now. So let's just get started doing that. I'll, I'll see if I can arrange these windows in a way so that we can see it all next to each other. Okay, so we have these two cameras right here. There we go. And then this web browser, if we could make that just tiny bit smaller and then get into the blue pill screen. Now I know this is super cramped, but you will be able to appreciate it when you see what happens. I, I select the CIN 500. I now pull this handle here. You can see that I'm actually zooming in and out on this one. If I drag this one, you see I'm, I'm now panning the camera. This, of course, is a, a virtual panel. This is our simulator inside of, of the Blue Pill. But it is this little guy connected to those cameras far away and controlled by my simulation. It could just as well have been a physical panel. Now, 
Let's try the other camera. I just selected CIN 300. I can do the same and you see that camera is also being operated. So I am connected. That should be proven beyond a doubt at this point. So simulator is a great tool inside of Reactor. I am sure you will appreciate that. And the same tool is in fact available inside the configurations app. In here, you just need to enable game mode. I call it game mode. I don't know if that's the official. I think it's simulation mode. Um, game mode, and uh, this is listening mode over here. We'll get back to that. But game mode allows us the same thing. I can pull this handle and, and then operate the panel or what the panel controls. So um, the thing is, that was a little bit of a detour. And I want us to do what we've done in previous videos, create a custom configuration. We'll call that training. And that is because I need you to learn some concepts about how the configuration tab works. To be honest, if you go with the default configurations and if you explore them in configuration tab, you will stumble head on into a lot of advanced concepts. Why? Because all the configuration we can bring out on the home screen requires some concepts underneath, like automatically generating camera selectors and so on out uh, from a so-called constant set where you set all the settings and choose the configs and, and so on. That makes it a little bit complex if you look at the configurations we just saw. So don't get frustrated about that. You are here to learn how to basically set this up from scratch yourself. And we have this uh, new configuration training that we just created right here in the layer tree. Don't worry about this one up here. So to get us up to speed on uh, where we are going, we will quickly uh, do what we have done before, select this layer, then we'll click this button on the controller, not in the simulated mode. Then we'll create a new behavior here that in a moment will be associated with a variable that we will create on this page. So I click this one. This is all from the previous videos. So we just create the menu variable. I can so quickly do this again. So just add three options here. I give them values like vmix, like presets, like cam select and I know I named them slightly differently than in the slides. And that's because I can. Camera select. Okay. So now I have created my variable over here. And you can see it has the value vmix by default. I can change that by using these flags. This is a UI way to manipulate the value of the variable. But the point is that we will associate it with a button like this one. And that's so easy by just editing the parameter, selecting the parameter, being it a variable selecting it here from this menu, submit, and then step change is the default master behavior that gets selected for you. And now if I go to simulation mode and I click this one, you'll see that it's rotating the values. It's clear in the displays. You can follow it over here like that. And in a moment, we'll use this to, uh, to, to manage the visibility of layers. That has also been shown in the previous video. So this is a sort of recap. Now, making new layers can be done in a number of ways you see that we have this little new layer button. So if I press this one, I could make a layer called vmix and submit and it's right here. Okay, so we do the same again. We call this presets and then we will call the last layer camera cam. Ah, why is that so difficult for me? Selector. There we go. Yes. All right. So I'm sorry about this one being red. Uh, it has to do with some preparations I did uh, prior to this uh, session. So um, we are now, I, I'll explain what that is in just a moment, but we have now these three layers. They are empty, so they make no difference to how our controller works right now. And one of the points is that we want to, um, to manage the visibility, but maybe let's talk a little bit about the layers um, first. Or actually I want to add a few more actions here. Oh, sorry, behaviors. I will add a behavior right here. Let me exit simulation mode like this. Just add this one, A5, and then I'll go to this layer and I will right click and, uh, oh, I will do it down here and then create a behavior. And let me see once again here. Create behavior and it's suggesting to create this on the VMAX layer, create. And that means now I get a behavior for A5 on the vmix layer. So this is the moment where we need to talk a little bit about what that means, because it's like I have to find something for this button on both this layer and this layer. And the the behaviors defined on each of these can't be can't be used at the same time. So because this is like a layer stack and I like to 
to compare this to like Photoshop, where you have layers of visual content in the composition. And if you disable the visibility of a layer, you see what is underneath. If something on that layer was occluding something underneath, right? That's the concept of layers that either implicitly or explicitly exist in a lot of programs we already know. It's the same in here. It's just like on every layer you create, and that can be like layers inside of layers. So I think Photoshop called that groups. But if you if you disable a whole group, for instance, then everything inside that group is is disappearing from the composition. Likewise here, if you have a layer like the training layer and get that disabled, then all sub layers will also be disabled or invisible. So when I place this behavior on the vmix layer, because the vmix layer is visible, and that's what this blue line shows you, it will occlude and substitute whatever was defined on A5 down here. Let's see if we can um, appreciate that a little bit. I know the action we put on this one is just, it says dummy behavior, but if we, um, if we click it here, choose show more, we can quickly, as we have seen in previous videos, just go to title and type in um, the vmix layer. I could not, I need to do this. VMAX layer, okay, and we submit this. So we now have this as a title inside. We could also change the text line. Let's not spend time on that. If I go down here and I likewise change the title, then we could write training layer, submit. All right, so if the VMAX layer was disabled, we would see what this action, uh, this behavior down here is actually showing. That means we need to work with the visibility of these layers. And that's what we have the active if condition for, because by default, a layer is always visible. But if I add an active if condition to this one, which I'll just do, then I pick the variable menu. And then I say that if it has the literal value vmix, then it should be visible. All right, like that. And then I can go up here and I can do the same for the presets and the camera selector. So let's quickly do this. If oh, it was already there, that was nice, right? So I could just quickly say presets, thank you. And then go up here, add active if condition and say cam cell. All right, because that was the values that I had for this variable. Let's just Check the values, vmix, presets, cancel. That's the values I chose for these variables. You could pick letters, numbers, basically whatever. It's all strings and it just has to match. Um, stay within A to C and numbers. Don't use special characters, please. Now, this little condition that is associated with each of these layers now defining whether it's visible or not. So if I press this button that would cycle the value of the variables, you'll see that the layers are becoming visible in turn, all right? Now, what I need you to notice is that the A4 behavior on this layer, the one where we set the title to be vmix layer, as soon as I click this button and the presets layer is now visible and this one was invisible, you'll see that it says training layer because the active definition of the behavior of button A5 is now this one, all right? I click again because no A4 is, A5 is defined on camera selector. I'm still falling through down to A5 here. And when I click once again, now we're on the VMAX layer and that definition of A5 is now being used. That's how it works. Okay. Here is a little pro tip that I think is cool because I am now going to select this layer, right click, um, sorry, I need to exit simulation mode, right click this one, create a behavior like this. So I now have an A5 up here on camera selection layer. We know this is not being used. Actually it is not, right? Because it's still this one that is on the top of everything. This, this is the visible layer. Here is a pro tip. If you have a layer like this one and you would like to cheat your way to visibility on that layer, which is currently not enabled, you don't want to use the variables to manipulate it. You can select the layer and up here, you can click this one. When it's red, then you are, we call it pinning the layer. And when you pin a layer, it means it floats on top and it's 
gonna be visible and occlude everything else. So this is how you can now see that my behavior became active. This is the behavior up there. I can toggle this on and off so you can see in the display here the effect of that behavior for A5 up here. This is so powerful because it means that you could define functionality of any hardware component on a Skyhawk controller on many layers and then the visibility of those layers will decide what that particular hardware component is going to do. And of course, you can have multiple of these here. Yes, that's a little bit on, about coloring. The blue color indicates that it is visible. This is the definition of, uh, let's see if we can just sort of disable the um, selection. Yeah, there we go. Now it's blue and these are gray. So the blue one is the one that is being used as the definition of how the button works. Let's uh, just disable the um, the pinning of this layer. And when I did that, it is now the variable menu equals vmix that defines that this A5 is becoming blue and visible. And when I click this one, sorry, I need to use the simulation mode. I click this one again, you can see that it will paint this one blue. The green one, I think it means that this is like the active one that we are editing over here. So that's what you have right there. There is some color conventions related to that, that um, I'm not sure I know all of them actually. But blue and gray is pretty natural in this case. I want to end the video by inviting you to look into the slides of the training material because here the layers are really explained in great detail and with a lot of passion for explaining them. First of all, it will talk a little bit about the different components you find on them and we'll end the video with that. Then it will talk about the order, the visibility order, and it will also tell you about the properties here and it will tell you about relationships of parents and child and sibling properties, etc. And this is a, a, a way to see the layer tree from the side. Like here you have A5 in gray and in blue and A6. And then this is like how you see the layer from the top. So one of the points that is being made here is that a layer tree like this one, layers with nested layers, you, you need to understand it's like the composition in Photoshop. You look at it from the top while right now we're looking at the layer stack from the side. So that's the fundamental thing that this drawing is trying to communicate. The other one is that we have a few things on these layers. We have like um, the behaviors here. Then we might have sibling layers inside. These are, uh, sorry, these are child layers to the training layer. They are siblings in themselves. They are on the same level, camera selector presets and vmix. And then finally down here, you have a number of pro properties for layers. In previous videos, we saw that we had master behaviors as properties. We can have constant sets. We have uh, virtual triggers possibly, something called HVC key map. That's this little guy. And we can even have imported file names and so on. So those are things that are all residing on layers. Thank you for watching this episode to get us started on an exciting journey with configuring this PTC Fly for operating two cameras and a vMix or ATEM system. In the next video, we'll continue with how to batch create behaviors for the buttons.